What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Seria Audio Experience with IFTV. It's been so long since we've recorded a podcast. I almost forgot how we even started this. Seriously. Guys, it's awesome to see everybody's faces over there. Antonio, Peter, Gaetano. Are you guys, have you missed us? It's been a while since we did one. I miss the podcast. I don't miss you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Anto. How's everybody doing? Dad, how you doing? Yeah, good. I mean, I, you must have been very busy because we're not doing a podcast. So you, you must be making a lot of money right now with uh, all this video that you're making. We've, we've actually been streaming every day on, uh, on Twitch. Twitch yeah. um, so that's, that's what we've been busy with a little bit. And also the content for us to speak about has been a little bit low. But I, you know, I, I speak to Antonio from time to time, and I know that he's got loads of content loaded in the vault right now that he's just ready to, to spew right now. and yeah. tell everybody what's on his mind. But before we go to Antonio, Peter, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm waiting like everyone else to see something from Italy, from Serie A saying that we're going to be back but you know we can we can hope right yeah we can well we we heard i mean we've heard uh different things multiple times you know something's contradicting we're hoping that after uh june 15th we'll actually get seria to come back um and everything will be approved by by all the boards and everything the teams obviously started practicing uh which is good but we do have bundesliga back we have some football have which... you guys been watching that at all anto did you watch it yeah I got nothing else to do. Hey, I got what do you think? Perfect. What do you think of the Bundesliga, Antonio, compared to the Serie A? You know, the Bundesliga should be uh, should be called the the. the, the, the uh, <laughs> say it, say it, say it. Easy. It's not with the BU. Yeah, okay. Well, um, it's sort of like the bullshit Liga. But anyway, <laughs> listen. At least I applaud them for at least giving the try. I mean, I was speaking with one of my teammates today from the Brooklyn Italian, and he was telling me. Hey, by the way, if the Italian championship starts and they find one positive on an entire team, on that entire team, uh, the, the team is, is out. In other words, in Germany, if they find one positive with the, with the virus, they isolate only that particular player. In Italy, they said that uh, like the condition for the team to go into the field is that everyone is supposed to be tested negative. If only one player comes out positive, then the whole team is out. What the hell is this BS over here? I mean, uh, so if somebody, if somebody's got a flu or somebody's got, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, the, the, the protocol is not out yet, so we don't know. But what we know is that Germany was the first country to start. We got to give them a lot of credit. Everybody yeah. is behind a month. And uh, these guys, they already started. So why don't we see what, uh, what Germany is doing? And maybe we follow what they're doing. They're playing soccer. I mean, they had three times the amount of spectators on TV that they usually have. So right now they're doing very well. Italy right now is in phase one. So they open the shops, they open the malls, they open the banks, barbershops, restaurants, bars. Um, and you can travel within the state. So if you want to travel within your state, you can. On June 3rd, then you can start traveling within Italy and within Europe. So on June 3rd, if you want to go from one region to another region, you're allowed to do that. And also within Europe, the Schengen countries. So we are hoping that by the, uh, in a few days that the Federation, the Italian Federation makes a decision on when the season can start. They are predicting to start around the 15th of June. Uh, between England, uh, uh, Spain, and Italy, around between the 15th to the to the 25th of June, to start. So, mm -hmm. and just we can we can wait uh, to to see some soccer. Yeah, and just with with Germany, I mean, I think they've been able to start. They they set up a set a certain date to start, and they maintained that date for the most part. I think it was only a week off from early May to May 16th. The government also allowed them to start, whereas where we see in France, the government shut down Ligon before they, Ligon even had anything to say. Germany, as far as cases were high, but death rate was low, they were able to maintain it a lot better than the rest of, of you know, different countries around the world. And I think that led to them also giving the okay for soccer to be back. Whereas Italy, um, the government supposedly now on May 28th, they're going to make a decision if they're going to allow 
uh, the Italian Soccer Federation to at least start uh, or at least say, okay, we're going to start for a def- with a definite date, June 15th. So we're still, wa- we're still waiting to hear from the Italian government what their take is take on it. And I think, of course, all of Serie A, they've all voted for it to, as far as like getting back. So let's see. We still have to see. It's kind of wild hey. that we're going to have some leagues playing and some over because obviously we know Holland is over. They're not going to continue. French Liga, league, yeah. uh, like you guys said, is over. Um, but Premier League, Spain, and Italy are all trying to push to play. And then, of course, Champions League is still going to be um, out, you know, whenever, whenever the date is that they're going to try to continue. So it's going to be interesting to see the dynamic that all the leagues and all the teams take and the precautions. And then, like Antonio said, what happens if somebody tests positive? Are they going to follow that, that model where they're isolated or, or how you continue with that? I don't know. Um, and I kind of hate the conversation around this because I think even the last time we recorded a podcast, it might have been a month ago, we were having these topics like, oh, is it going to be April this? And, you know, we keep saying these dates. It's but late May already by, the, now. by the time that we finish this podcast, it might, some, some yeah, more news might be out pushed. that it's pushed. Exactly. Antonio, how do you feel? Well, I'll tell you what I, what I think. I mean, hey, I mean, we, we listen to, what, to our government. You said, okay, you have the self-quarantine. First of all, it's two weeks, then four, three weeks, then four weeks, then it's a month, and now it's kind of two months. You know what? Enough is enough. First of all, we have some civil liberty too. You know, every citizen, I mean, he's got to serve some sort of a self-containment within the, their brain. Hey, if you do not trust yourself with what you're doing, I don't think you should be out of there to begin with. So what, what I'm trying to say is this. I think soccer should just stop listening to all of those quote-unquote government experts. We pay taxes, okay? We pay everything. So the least that we can do is to have those guys off our back. There is no law into the Constitution of Italy and United States that tells us oh, that we're going to see what, uh, uh, I don't know, in New York, what the Blasio Cuomo said, or in Italy, what Conte says. Well, you know, the Conte, Conte, you know, the, the, the two names, they, they, they rhyme each other. So if one Conte is dummy, Another one cannot be any better than the other one. So uh, I just hope I'm wrong, but enough is enough, okay? So if we have to, if we have to start soccer without anybody on the stand, that is already a major, 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, concession from the, you know, from the sports standpoint of view. Then allow the people that they've been forced to stay home at least to watch the goddamn game on the TV, okay? Yeah. That's enough. Well, Antonio, here's a thing. What about the player's point of view? If the player is going to risk and now he's going to go home, we, we, you, we have a job, government has a job, okay, that they protect the people and protect the citizens. The so player that I'm comes saying, positive, being isolated, that's it. It doesn't, yes, I understand. I'm not saying, I'm not arguing which way they should handle it. What I'm saying is the players also have to know for a fact that there's going to be a certain protocol that protects them. And if that is not met, then it's dangerous for a player to go and play, even though they're at a younger age. Look at Dybala. It took him 45 days to actually get rid of the coronavirus from him. Now it could put a risk, not necessarily for the player, but his family, his who knows who he comes in, into contact with. So it has to be done safely. But Peter, in Italy, we know that the, 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 they call it the, the tamponi. Yes. The, you the know, test- they all... They all uh, all messed up. Who the hell has known that we were, they were fake positive or fake negative? You know. Okay, but there's, we have a death rate, but I mean, even I if you want to say, who, yeah, there's been people that died from it, so we can't I say know, that. I know, I know. Listen, I'm not disputing that, but you know, if the protocol is for the team to test the day, the, the day before they get into the field, I said, okay, every team, you, you have to be tested, you have to be negative. Whoever comes mm-hmm. positive stays home. Before you get yourself into the, the bus or, or, or the plane, you say, okay, did you, are you negative? Okay, boom, get in. Or they take the temperature before even the game. You do the, the test the, before, the day before the game, and then you take the temperature. You put a gun on the head, and then you, you, ch- you check the, the, the number, okay? If they are negative, then let them play. I mean, everything can happen, Pete. If we have to play with this kind of fear, soccer will never, never be played again. No. What's real interesting is that um, in the Premier League, um, Troy Deeney, who um, he's, he's plays for Watford, uh, Watford yeah. he said that he is not, no matter what happens, he is not going to play, uh, he's not going to play football anymore. Um, even if the Premier League says, listen, we're starting June 10th, he said, I'm not going because he has a concern, like Peter just said, 
of what's happening at home with his family. I, th I believe he has a young son. He said he's five months old and he already has breathing problems and he thinks that it's going to put both him and his family at risk if he goes to play where he's containing it. He's not, he's not going to be contained in an isolated environment. So he himself said, no matter what happens, I'm not going to play no matter what. So I think it is, of course, important to look at the player's point of view because at the end of the day, they're people too and they have families. And I, as much as we want the game to be back, it needs to be done the right way. And, and I guess the, the government way. would know. Yeah. What, hey, but Marco, he can stay home. I mean, we're okay with that. Let him stay home because you know what? At the end of the day, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, there are more people dying of suicides, of uh, home abuse, or children abuse. There's some, a lot of stuff is going on that hasn't been recorded. Everything that we record, every death that we recorded, it's corona, yes, corona, no. It's like, do you drink a beer or you drink water? So what I'm saying is, enough is enough. There are people dying of a heart attack. People not going to the hospital to check their cancer status. People not getting screened for uh, colonoscopy or, uh, or prostate. A lot of this stuff here is happening. But at some point, you have to say, hey, listen, there are already some control medication that they are out there. We, we learn a lot more about the virus. Let's move on with our life because we are killing ourselves and we are playing into the hands of those people that they spread the virus. Let me not make, let me not make the name, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go on. Let's, let's talk soccer. It's over right now. Let's go on. Let's talk about Inter Milan, AC Milan, you know, Roma, Juventus. That's it. Champions League. That's what the goal is going to be from now on. Otherwise, you know, someone else that is going to be listening to the podcast and say, look at those stupid losers that are still scared about the virus. So, all right, that's it. Dad, Dad anything oh. to, to conclude as we move on on this? About yeah, let this? Me put, uh, let, let me put my two cents on this uh, coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, certain people with underlying conditions, and if you are at a certain age, those that are at higher risk, well, those people, maybe they should stay home. So if you are of an age like Antonio, which you, you are over 60, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should stay home. No, but on a serious note, I understand that your constitutional rights that you have, but you also have to understand that if you, you could put other people at risk, not only yourself, but your family, but the people also at the hospital, that are going to take care of you, you put them at a risk. So it's got to be done in a safe way. You, you're going to start open? Yes, we can start open. But I have seen a lot of pictures and videos of Italy that they start opening and they have no mask. They all gather together. They're all partying, happy hour, drinking. You know, you have to do it in a moderation. You got to wear your mask. You have to social distance. And the people that are at high risk, I think right now they should not go out. So those people that are a little bit on the older side and they have um, uh, respiratory problems, those people are high risk. Stay home, you know, and then let the other people that go out, you have to observe the distance and wear a mask, wear gloves, wash your hands. And I think that if you have an environment where a team is practicing and where everybody's been tested in those people that are practicing and everybody's negative and you try to keep those people that are all negative together, I think you can go ahead and, and practice and, and have a group practice. I think that's pretty safe. You go to the hotel, the hotel has to be clean if they all go into the hotel, you know, try to stay together. The problem becomes when you start traveling, you know, what do you do once you start traveling? You go to different hotels, um, going in and out of uh, different locker rooms. But if you keep the group and you keep the group and, and the group is all negative and you keep them together, I think it's, it's safe for them to practice and play. Yeah. Um, like I, I agree that, uh, hopefully we can move on from this. Obviously it's been tough times for everybody in one way or another. Um, uh, people are always going to be effective, uh, affected by it. Um, and one of the good things actually that we could share is our sponsor Skrill, um, who's been a great advocate with IFTV, are doing some awesome things that we could smile about. Um, they, they filmed an interview with Ben Asser. They're actually 
the global partner with uh, AC Milan now. Antonio, you should be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see Antonio giving us a thumbs up over there that he's happy about it. Um, so they filmed a video with Ben Esser, And if you head on to their Instagram page right now to go watch it, you could actually win 100 euros if, uh, by commenting one of the answers. Um, just watch, watch the video. All the details are actually in our description right now. Um, and shout out to Skrill, who um, supporting IFTV, always supporting our content. So we really appreciate them. And now, Antonio, I think you got to become a big fan of them because they're partners with yeah. AC Milan. I already downloaded the app on my phone. What are you talking about? It? I, right. Everywhere I go, I keep saying, watch Skrill, watch Skrill. I just keep, keep saying, uh, you know, <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I know you. I know you. That's why you're the first person that I thought about. I know all the AC Milan fans now. Uh, since we have a lot of AC Milan fans, they're really happy to see that. Um, they're doing a lot of interactive stuff. So head on over to their Instagram. The, it's linked in the description below. And you have a chance to win 100 euros. And they did something with Del Piero a while ago. They're really in that football world, which is so awesome because not a lot of uh, these companies are. So having Skrill, like, by our side supporting us and into culture, it's hard well, to say no to them. Their you know? CEO is he's somebody that would have been on our podcast. He's, a big, yeah. he's actually a big fan of culture himself. Exactly. So uh, to have somebody like that there... Um, and also just a thank you for always supporting IFTV's content. Anyway, guys, let's move on. Let's, um, well, where, where do you guys want to go next? We have some transfer news that we could talk about. Yeah, listen, before what? we even start, I, uh, yeah. we, we all sorry here for the loss of your grandfather. I mean, we lost another big fan of the podcast and of soccer. So, uh, you know, I'm sure it's in great hand right now. I think this is a tribute to, uh, to your grandfather. We're going to just keep going and we're going to keep fighting for soccer until uh, fin while fin. And now is the time, okay? All right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I know even Peter, uh, we, had, we had obviously two hard losses uh, for both of us. Yes, and Peter uh, too. Peter lost a cousin and he lost uh, his grandmother too. So not just for you guys, it's just for all the soccer podcasts and for all the people that we lost inside of this world for this nasty virus. You know, we are here until the very end supporting uh, the families of those guys and uh, the soccer family uh, all together. I think, yeah, now, now more than ever, I think um, you're seeing a lot of people come together. So to have um, this community and all those people around me, I appreciate everybody that sent us messages. Um, but yeah, and I think, I think the best thing is like just trying to get your mind off it in any way. So that's why all these transfer rumors that we, we could eat up or Bundesliga or anything that we get to watch in any way. Um, help gets your, you know, your mind off it and, and help gets you back into that zone that I know we all, uh, we all want to be in. Um, where you guys want to go? You want to talk? We have, we have um, some topics from a Giuseppe Rossi interview that we recorded. We have transfer news. There's um, something controversial that Gazeta posted that I want to get everybody's opinion on. And then there's something else at the end that we'll, we'll talk about. Where you guys want to head? Let's start with the transfer. Well, Milan's not making any transfers, so we can just stop <laughs> sorry, it right now. Sorry about Milan. Let's talk about transfer. <laughs> well, Milan, uh, Milan might be making some transfers, right? Uh, is, Zebra, is Zebra staying with uh, AC Milan or is he going? The Zebra is on the zoo right now, okay? The <laughs> Zebra is on the zoo. <laughs> and what about Maldini? Is he going or is he, is he on Mont Listen, Listen, out? He's, he's, staying? he's the deal. He's the deal. Unfortunately, now AC Milan is in the hands of a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, immature and uh, uh, not really soccer oriented uh, people. They're just business people. They're trying to, uh, to look at the business aspect of the game only. They don't, they're not looking at the technical aspect. So there is all of these rumors about Ragnic, wherever they, I don't know that they spell the name of this guy, the German guy. So all the coaching uh, coming from Germany and, uh, and uh, the management coming from Germany. So those people that they, they want to point uh, all their attention and their energy into the hands of those uh, unknown young and athletic players. And uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, I have my doubts that it's going to work out. It's just another move that uh, it's not a uh, uh, part of the AC Milan DNA. And then, uh, you know, but the, the, main, the main thing is, is there is a lot of energy around the team, but the energy is not really, you know, focused on the right, on the, right, uh, on the solution of solving the, solving the problem uh, of the team right now. Yeah, I think, I think now more than ever, obviously with coronavirus and with everything that happened, um, a lot of the team's transfer budgets and all that kind of stuff has been um, diminished. Uh, but with, with Zlatan, like my dad was saying, I don't think that there's any way that Zlatan ends up staying at Milan past this. 
I know, I think Mihailovic, yeah. was it Mihailovic had already started saying that he's either going to come to Bologna, which was the rumor, you know, back in um, before he in went December, to Milan. Yeah, yeah, before he went to Milan, or he's going to go back to Sweden where he was practicing yeah. the whole time during, during quarantine. So I think personally that Zlatan, you're not, I think he's, I don't know if he's going to go to Bologna, but I, so I can't nice. see him staying at Milan. Yeah, Mihailovic said apparently he, uh, Zlatan called him and told him that. He's like, I'm either going to Bologna or I'm going to a Swedish club. So that would be amazing if he goes to Bologna. But Divayo, Divayo from Bologna said I, he's not even – he doesn't even like his yeah. form and his physical yeah, status. Yeah, know, but still. What do you guys think? Do you think Zlatan uh, – you think he's still got something to give to Bologna? you think it's a smart move from Bologna? He's going to stay. Zlatan, if anything, look, if he scores three, four more goals or five goals to make up, uh, you know, the double-digit numbers uh, or to break uh, the records uh, within AC Milan, I think 99% is going to stay an extra year. I got new- Peter? No, uh, Zlatan uh, from Bologna, would, I think, would be a great, not necessarily a great fit, but a great player for the team. I mean, the guy can score still. We saw it already in Serie A with, with Milan. He's, he's made the team a lot better because he's held everyone else uh, accountable in practice and during the game. And I think also another factor is that the, the Swedish team, he's actually part owner, Hammerby. So yeah. he would have to pay his salary. So I don't know if he would like that. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Any opinion on it? No, I think right now Milan is in a mess because, uh, uh, you know, somebody like Maldini, who, who's been uh, with the, uh, they have a history, or uh, family history with, uh, with the AC Milan. And to read every day in the newspapers, is he out, is he in, is he almost out? And then uh, he also told uh, Ragnick, uh, you know, before you learn Italian, you have to learn to respect. Uh, so and that, was, uh, that was a low blow. And it's, it's sad to see this, one of the teams that has won uh, in the history of the Cups has got one of the, the most uh, won Cup uh, and uh, one of the best teams uh, in the world. And now to see them in these conditions, uh, that really, um, it's really upsetting. Yeah. Well, I think, think it's Anto or Peter, Peter. I was, I was going to say with AC Milan, it seems like there's no real leader. Uh, you know, with, with the days of Berlusconi, Galliani, you always had those, those guys that were, whether it be bad or good, they were always on the mic and talking to protect Milan and they knew what to say. So I feel like Maldini was, you know, he wanted this job and got put in this position, but with no support staff, with no support. And he was pretty much not protected, and he, he got thrown to the wolves in a sense. And it also has to do with Milan and, and their times. Listen, they're not able to attract top players because they're not able to pay for top players. And I think the AC Milan fans expect greatness because of their history, and they expect to you know be able to play for the Scudetto, play for Champions League, but they're not there yet. And also getting Ragnic now, he's coming from Red Bull, which their whole plan – you know, their whole system is to get young players and then sell high. So it'll be interesting to see if he keeps that model or with Milan, he's able to adapt or change that model or see how it works. But it's going to be really interesting because one, he's not used to the Italian, you know, Italian soccer, Italian culture. And two, you have the AC Milan fans that expect nothing but the best. And they're not going to be patient, I would guess, to, to wait three or four years for, for this Milan team to come back up. So. It's kind of a weird thing with ownership these days. Like, obviously, Roma is having their issues. They were nearly sold. Um, and, Peter, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, we're hearing that due to coronavirus and due to the evaluation that both parties had, Palotta, um, it's probably not going to be going through anymore. So I think that, you know, even with <clears throat> excuse me, with Elliot and all the other teams that were planning on, on being sold or planning certain transfer markets, all of that's going to be changed. Um, and to see their strategy of where they go forward uh, will be interesting, to say the least. But some good news for uh, – not good news for you, Pete, but some good news for Napoli fans, who I know were rejoicing the other day in our comment section, was Dries Mertens, who was really expected to leave on a free transfer um, away from Napoli this summer. Um, likely to Inter was all the rumors they were saying. He's expected to renew now out of nowhere. So I know Napoli fans are real happy. Um, and I think Inter lost out on a real good player that understands Serie A. 
um, extremely well. And I'm happy that Mertens goes there because obviously the history that he has um, breaking the, the Maradona and Hamsik's goal scoring record. So it'll be exciting to, to continue seeing him. Peter, you're, you're mad about that? I mean, listen, uh, Mertens would have been a great pickup for, for Inter. But in the same time, you know, it, it's nice to see every once in a while that the player, uh, you know, chooses with his heart more than, let's say, more money. And he, he chose to stay in Napoli because he, he's expressed it over and over again how he loves Napoli and loves the fans. And, and listen, uh, Napoli deserves a great team based on, you know, the history of Maradona and what they've been able to do these past couple of years. So it's, it's nice to see that he's still there. There's a couple of big names that are expected that are, are kind of eating up all of the spotlight, in my opinion, for, um, for the transfer market. The first one that I'll, I'll ask you guys about, and I have a direct question, it's Pjanic. Uh, it doesn't seem like even the Juventus fans, they seem like they're fed up with Pjanic, that he hasn't been doing real well. Some people say, listen, it's Sadi's fault. Some people say it's Pjanic's fault. Should he stay? Should he go? Dad, what do you think? Mirel and Pjanic, there were rumors earlier this week that Juventus were working on a swap almost on every front for Pjanic. Um, whether it be for Semedo from Barcelona, where there was a ridiculous rumors of 25 million Pjanic and De Chilio for Semedo. Arthur. There was also rumors, um, direct swap for Arthur, and there were also rumors for Jorginho. Dad, where do you think, do you think Pjanic has a future at Juventus and should he have a future at Juventus? Okay, we, we have to see who will make the decision. If Sarri makes the decision, he's going to take Jorginho. That's what, that's his man. He, he had him at Napoli, he had him at uh, Chelsea. I think that's the guy that he wants. But if somebody else makes the decision, I think that uh, they probably would want Arthur, I think. Probably Arthur would be the, uh, the better player um, that the top management from Juventus is thinking about. So let's wait and see. Um, Hey, I think. Do you I think, think he should be sold, though? Uh, Pjanic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, Juventus, uh, if they can get a better player, they're, they're not going to think about it twice. Is Arthur a better player, though? By far. Uh, Arthur, Arthur, I've seen him play with Brazil a couple of times. Then with Barcelona, he never plays. This guy never plays. He's always on the bench. So I don't know him that well. I accept. You know, one or two. I mean, the guy is in the Brazilian national team. Uh, he has to have some, uh, you know, some good qualities. Uh, I would like to see him more, but I don't think they're happy with Pjanic. I think Pjanic will have some good games and then uh, he doesn't have, it's not all the time. So I would think that it's between Arthur and the Jorginho. Anto, what do you think? I'm telling you what I'm thinking. Okay, first of all, Peter, Peter is licking his finger, he's licking his chops. Because every time there is a rumor of a big player transfer some, from where, somewhere to somewhere else, it's always, you, you see on the list of the Inter Milan squad. Now about this Lautaro, there's, oh, if Lautaro goes, we want Arthur, this, this, and the list goes on and on and on. Okay, so here's the deal. This is the content mentality. The guy is so stupid that he can think his way out of a wet paper bag. Okay? <laughs> You're talking about Pjanic. What's Where are you coming on? up with Conte? Pjanic, that's the, let me get to my point. Sorry, I'm sorry. Pjanic time in Juventus, it's over. Once the rumor, they start to, to, uh, to uh, you know, turn I'm around, to, to swivel around the team, the guy's gone. Before even uh, you know it, the guy's going to be gone. Juventus will not keep anybody against their will. So they're going to look for the best deal and they're going to kick him right on his uh, rear hand. So Pjanic is history already. Okay, go on to Lautaro because Lautaro is the other massive yeah, name who's being yeah, linked with the move to Barcelona. This is why I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So what, what happened now, Inter, they already know that they're not going to be able to keep Lautaro. So now they're looking into uh, Tonali, they're looking into, uh, uh, you know, uh, Arthur, they're looking into everybody. They want 20 players in addition to sit on the bench and to be at the, at the mercy of Conte. So if Conte wakes up on the wrong side of the bed one day, they said, okay, you're on the bench, you're on the bench. So look at that. They took Ericsson. Now Ericsson is not even worth to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be a starter. Uh, Antonio, I, I think you get confused with what Inter wants and what the newspapers write. Those are two different things. Listen. The newspapers are going to create their stories. There might be some interest, but it doesn't mean that 
Inter's going to get all these guys. They're going to give different options, and the newspapers got to sell their newspapers. Listen, already the rumor about, uh, uh, about Icardi not, not coming back, it's already starting to get them crazy again because, you know, Icardi and Vanda, they have to be on the first, uh, you know, uh, on, uh, on the, on the, on, at the tip of the tongue of everybody. But now, apparently, Icardi is trying to put some pressure on you guys. They said, hey, the guy wants to sign up with us, so let's make the deal over here because it's never going to happen that Icardi is going to be wearing what you're wearing right now, the Inter shirt. It's not, it's over. I don't okay. think they want him. Lautaro, is he going to be the most expensive transfer in the Italian ever? No. Lautaro? I doubt no, it. No, no, no. no, Gaetano, I doubt it. It's not worth it. They're talking no, he's, he's got, he's got uh, over 100 million. He's got a clause of 111 million. I don't know. Yeah, if, okay. Well, didn't, Pogba know, go for, didn't Pogba go for more? Around there, at least? I think he went for 90 something. No. Yeah. Huh? Like, no. yeah. 90. Pogba went for 90 million. I'll try. Anyway, uh, okay, whatever. So who, who comes in for Lautaro? Who's, who's the player that they're looking to replace Lautaro? Mm, so, so they wanted uh, Mertens at first. Uh, then they, uh, now they're looking out. Now they're looking out Cavani, and I think they had those were additions. Striker, those were they? additions to Lautaro. That's yeah. not if you sell Lautaro, you replace him. The guy that they keep talking about, that their dream, that I think Peter, he's oh. every night that Peter goes to sleep, he he has a. <laughs> Uh, a dream about this guy is obviously yeah. Lionel Messi. Yeah, but we got to be realistic. Inter sporting director said that in 2008, he said Moratti, <laughs> he had on his wish list ready yeah. for as a gift to the Inter fans for 100 years of their club was Lionel Messi. They said they had it ready, but the one thing was that Messi felt too close to Barcelona that at that time, which is over 12 years ago, did not want to leave Barcelona. Now, there are rumors that, listen, maybe Messi wants to try himself abroad. I don't know. If he's part of the deal, then obviously, if you're an Inter fan, you take it, you know, in the blink of an eye. But if it's not him, I mean, Pete, any, any idea? Do you want to sell Lautaro? Who do you want? Okay, is Messi real? I mean, if Messi, if Messi comes to Inter, it's a fairy tale ending. But, I mean, likelihood of that happening, I think very slim. Um, unless there's, you know, really something in, in Messi that says, I want to get out of Barcelona, but he's always said the opposite. He hasn't even give hit, given hints. Um, that being said, Lautaro, I, I, I like Lautaro, don't get me wrong, but at $111 million, you can buy some decent players and fill that void that, that Lautaro leaves. The only thing is we want to make sure that we get a player, because Mertens is great, don't, you know, but he ha is also at a certain age. You know, there's a player that you're looking to get, and in, in a year, two years, you have to win something. Um, and then you have to look for a younger player again. So I think also, you know, Inter's probably looking at the player that they have, uh, Sebastiano Esposito, that uh, a lot of – listen, I'm not saying that he's ready, but he's a guy that already at 16, 17 years old is, is in consideration with the first team, brought up by none less – you know, Conte, who, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but, I'm brain dead. Okay. <laughs> but Listen. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is in two years, he might be ready to, to perform in that position that Lautaro gives up. Would you do it for Suarez? Oh, I love Suarez. Yeah. He's yeah, older okay. too, though. Interesting. But dad, dad, any opinion? Mm, I mean, Lautaro, at a hundred million, uh, yeah, you. I think you 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 give it away. Agreed. I don't. I don't think it's worth one hundred and eleven million. Agreed. Uh, I mean, until a couple of years, what happened? Uh, there were other coaches that didn't believe in this in this kid. Um, yeah, for a hundred and eleven million, you you get rid of him and you you uh, you get yourself. I mean, I like Cavani. If I I, I always like Cavani. Um, I would go and uh, I would go to PSG and uh, if I get 111 million for um, for him, yeah, I'll get uh, I would get Cavani. Hey guys, listen to this. Cavani gets uh, you know with Ericsson. If Ericsson works out and you get a nice forward with uh, you, you love a nice team. They gotta go for they gotta go for Holland. 
They got a 75 million. If you do that, listen, number one, 111 million without blinking your eye, you got to take it for a lot. Listen to me. Here's the point again that I'm trying to make. Now, what Inter is doing, it's what everybody else has failed in the past. Look what Barcelona Real Madrid did. Okay, for them to eliminate the competition, what they did in the past, they bought nothing but the best player. Like they took Kaká away from AC Milan. They took Svechenko away from AC Milan. They took Ibrahimovic yeah. away from AC Milan. Thiago Silva away from AC Milan. They took nothing but the best player in order to eliminate competition. That's why they started to win a little bit some Champions League on and off. So okay. that's what Inter is trying to do. So Inter, now for this Lautaro, that for me is not worth only even $30 million. <laughs> <laughs> so just get rid of him. I mean, if somebody's giving you even 40 million euros, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. The thing is that everybody's missing this Tonali. He's the best player in all Europe right now. And whoever lands that kid, Tonali, that is the, that is the player that everybody should be talking about and not this Lautaro. Lautaro. Antonio, if you're Tonali, where would you go? Don't say AC Milan, no. What? I if said I'm if you were Tonali, where would you go? What team would you sign for? But don't say Milan. Um, hmm. I would go to Napoli. Whoa, that was a okay. curveball. That's that I think that's a big question mark right now is where's is Tonali gonna go? I think the two biggest names are obviously Inter and Juventus right now. Um Dad, what do you think? Obviously Tonali's probably one of um one of a couple really, really bright players for uh for the Italian. And I think that this is a big moment also for the Azzurri. It's where he 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 uh decides to go. I know that Totti's got an eye on him. Uh, Totti said that he's the best young player. Yeah, even Pirlo said the same thing. And Pirlo said that uh, he, he's very, very good. Actually better than him. According to Pirlo, Pirlo said to him, I said, he's got better skills than me, that, 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 that himself. And he said it's a combination of a Pirlo and uh, somebody a little bit more Gattuso. aggressive into the, on, the, on uh, the, the last 15, uh, 16 meters. Gattuso, so, uh, Gattuso. That was, his, uh, that was his idol. Right. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, instead of be talking about this hockey park of Lautaro, which is, uh, you know, it's, 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 hockey park. it's just to me, to me, to me, look, to me, Icardi is better than Lautaro. Okay. Sure. They, they, they both came from Inter. So now to be putting all of this attention on Lautaro is because Messi made a phone call. So yeah, you tell Messi, I said, here, you got it. I will just serve him. It's free for you. You'll keep him. Okay, so, so Antonio says Napoli for Tonali. My dad, I think you were saying you were going to get to the gist that you're going to say Roma. Yes. If, right? Uh, Peter, where do you think? Juventus is going to take it. Tonali? Yeah. I can't say Inter, right? Yeah, no, you can. That's, that's legitimate. Uh, I, if, I, if I understand correctly, I think uh, Tonali goes to Inter. And then who do you play as your three then? Because you already you have Ericsson, you have Brozovic, you have Sensi, you have Barella. That's a lot of players to yeah. fill a three-man midfield. Yeah, they want the, the Italian national team, they want the English national team, the German national team. They want everybody. That's Inter way of winning. Take everybody away, every player away from everybody, and that's the only way Conte can win. That dummy. Well, Peter. I think I think you're gonna want to have the best players you possibly can and have depth. I mean, if your objective is to, you know, win the Scudetto, play in the Champions League, you need that rotation that way. Look what happened to Inter. We got, we, we lost Sensi and uh, who was it? Barella. Barella yeah. And, and, you know, our chances of champions of playing in the Champions League with those two players, it made a big difference for a two, couple of months. We were still able to win, but Inter's style of play completely changed without Sensi. So you need those players. And, you know, even Juventus, Come on, uh, look at last year, you know, with the midfield that you guys had. Okay, maybe not be the, it's not the midfield that you always wanted, but you had Emre Can on the bench. Emre Can can start for anybody, you know. Not for anybody. Uh, you don't think so? Who could he start? He couldn't start for Juventus. He couldn't, he couldn't start for Inter. <laughs> I, think, I think he could. Hey, he's not, he's where, not does he start? where does he start for Inter? Where does he start for Inter? Well, I'll, I'll take him on the No, pool. no, hold on, Anto. Where does he start for Inter? I'm saying he's, tech, he's not a technical player, but he's very much like Barella in that hardworking, you know, strong type of player. And he also scores more goals than Barella. He could, he could potentially uh, play with Barella. If I'm giving you a three-man midfield, I'm giving you a three-man midfield. Eriksson, Sensi, Barella, um, Brozovic, 
and and Emre Chan. Who are the three that you're choosing? Okay, but it, who are the three that you're choosing? I'm everybody I'm doesn't choose. The guy biased. doesn't choose. He wants everybody. Marco, come on! Don't you get it? My point is that Emre Chan could not star for any team. That's okay, just my but, point. And but, I think I think there's a big argument that Tonali would walk into Juventus's midfield probably before Inter's. I still think that he walks into Inter's, but I think that you have a lot more problem trying to walk into Inter's because you have Barella, yeah. Sensi, Brozovic, and Eric. You, well, you would definitely think- need him more than Inter. Inter has a lot more midfielders, and if uh, Tonali does come in, uh, Conte is going to have to sell a few of their players. Yeah, I don't know what. I'm, I'm just trying to think there's logically. Too, there's what, too many what players do. over there, way too many midfielders. You so. know, Mar- Marco, I mean, Mike, I rarely agree with Marco. With, um, Marco <laughs> I rarely agree with Mike. M&M's over here. We have two M&M's. So anyway, I rarely agree with Mike, but this time he's got a good point. Inter's got too many midfielders over there, okay? He gets Eriksen, he gets uh, Brozovic, you know, he's got the, the best midfielder of Italy. He's got, uh, and now on top of everything, he's going to get Tonali and Eriksen over there. So what is he going to do, this guy here? This guy is on pro sac Conte. Listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> I miss you, Anto. This guy needs to be getting out, okay? Tell him to come, listen, listen. Tell Conte to come out to the sunlight because the fresh air is always the best disinfectant. The guy needs to breathe some fresh air and come out to the clean and say, listen, I want to eliminate the competition and I want everybody. Because those guys, they have a limited budget. They can spend their way out of anything. So now what they're going to do? They're going to bring Tonali over there. What they're going to do? They're going to sit him on the bench. Look what happened with Ericsson. They sat him on the bench. Yeah. Um, let's, let's move on. I don't know. Did you guys hear about that Manolas injury this week? Oh, God. No. <laughs> Manolas, you know, they started training. Manolas tore something in his thigh or in his hamstring oh, doing a bicycle kick during uh, calcio tennis, a match of calcio tennis. Oh, okay. He's out for two months. I will deduct his salary. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it. I will prorate his salary. I will deduct it on top of all the deduction on uh, on uh, the you know for the stuff of the corona. I will take all the feta cheese and the salary of like two months. <laughs> Peter, what do you think about that? I don't know. First of all, defenders shouldn't be doing bicycle kicks. That's what yeah. happened. <laughs> that is not uh, not very smart. two months you're off of the season i just had to bring it up because i know mike i know mike has been uh a lot of people have been messing with mike about it saying why is your buddy uh doing a bicycle kick those games get competitive though to be honest guys you know Hey Mike, I got I got news for you. I know this guy here is the the owner of my pillow. He's, he's Greek too. His name is Mike Lindell. Actually, that should be your nickname, Mike Lindell. He can, <laughs> <laughs> he can take Manolas on his factory. He can just make pillows, so uh, we can sleep better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that came from. Uh, what's uh, the name? Okay, so yeah, uh, Tonali, I, I think that Tonali, it, it would make me smile if, uh, if Tonali could come to Juventus and, and fit in the midfield. And I think, uh, you know, my smile these days are, is starting to look a little bit better thanks to We Smile Dental, who I've had the Invisalign. I'm now at six weeks on Invisalign. And I got to tell you, my tooth is no longer over the other tooth. Yeah. It's been, can you tell? Yeah, I could. Your teeth usually uh, crowd a little bit, overlap, but now uh, with the... With Invisalign, uh, helped a lot, right? This thing, this thing is a miracle. I, I barely even feel it all the time. And uh, we smiled dental, who obviously we know um, has been, uh, uh, um, you know, helping us on the podcast. They've always supported IFTV. Oh. Um, it's helped us with everything that we need. And even during the coronavirus, these guys have been incredible. Just messaging, making sure they were so adamant. They were more adamant than me. Making sure, listen, Marco, you need to make sure you get your trays because you didn't send them in the beginning. They shipped them to me. They made sure that I got them on the right day. They don't stop working. So these guys at Wisconsin. Marco, listen, Marco, we, are have him, we, have, we have to introduce them to my son. My son is going to be a dentist next year. Hey, oh, nice. Listen, if you want to introduce them, they got We Smile and they have Nunez Dental. If you're in the New York area, 
I travel yeah. like an hour away just to go Stay to them home. just because they're incredible. <laughs> He's calling this song. If you yeah. wouldn't said anything, I mean, I cannot, I can't tell. I cannot tell that you, that you have him on. Yeah. That's, that's what everybody has said to me is, uh, you know, I tell them afterwards and I thought you could hear, I have like a little bit of a list, but even I notice, but most people, every time I tell them afterwards that I'm wearing a Invisalign, they start staring. And even if they stare, they're like, I, I don't even notice it. Yeah. So they've been really good. If you need any, any dentist work, um, in the New York area, we smile dental. Check them out um, for they sure. They actually, I hate the dentist. Dad, I think you could attest. How long have I, uh, as a kid, did I not want to go to the dentist? Oh my God! Every time uh, for the appointment, uh, I have to tell you for months and months before I get you there. And I would look for any excuse in the book just to get out of it. Now, Marco's the first these one. Guys, now. These guys at We Smile—they actually make you feel comfortable. I played FIFA. Yeah. I played FIFA while I was getting the treatment. So um, they're really good. If you if you need to get anything done, definitely go to We Smile or Nunez Dental. They're both hey, both absolutely to amazing. Marco, yeah. listen to this. This is the We Smile Dental right here. Listen, this guy. There he is. With We Smile Dental. Yeah, I know, but eventually, <laughs> eventually, this guy's gonna make me smile a little better because you know, right now I'm bleeding my my pocket, but he's gonna he's gonna fix my teeth. He's gonna make me look like a, you know, uh, uh, like Tonali. <laughs> hopefully hopefully your teeth get better as ac milan get better and then your smile is going to be beautiful don't bet on that we're going to wait a while no, no, zoom in right here no 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 i don't want, I don't want to <laughs> we'll hook you up with we smile guys um have i know we've all been in quarantine we're going to wrap up real soon um, one thing one uh one thing i want to say about barcelona since we're talking about barcelona giuseppe rossi gave uh we did a, a fifa video with giuseppe rossi which was incredible um, it's a lot of fun. The part two just got released right now as we're talking and part three comes out tomorrow, Friday. Um, he says in this part in part two that he was this close, this close to signing for Barcelona in 2011. And you, you should go hear the way that he explains it. But basically, um, he even gave the transfer fee. He gave the amount that he was about to the sign bonuses, for. Yeah. Villarreal and Barcelona had agreed a deal to sign him because he had an amazing season. They couldn't agree on how much money was, was given up front. They had a problem with the bonuses, and he didn't end up signing for Barcelona, which would have put him in a front trio of Giuseppe Rossi, Lionel Messi, and David Villa. They ended up going to sign Alexis Sanchez for Udinese, which he always jokes saying, you're welcome, Sanchez, because my deal didn't go through. You got to go and go to Barcelona. But, guys, I, I mean, my reaction to that was I was so Crazy. flabbergasted. I couldn't believe that we almost had Giuseppe Rossi play for Barcelona. Listen, the Giuseppe Rossi is still right now. He was one of the top players when he was on the top of his career. Still right now, I believe he's a big different maker. You know, you just need to find the team that is going to believe on him. And then I'll tell you what. Anybody that writes off Giuseppe Rossi, I think is wrong. Okay? We agree. So, uh, we agree, but isn't it? I I'm, I told him that I hated Barcelona in those days. Obviously, there was you know Inter with the triplete in 2010. They were always the guys that were kind of knocking us out, or we would always have problems with them. And I, I told him I, as an Italian, it would have they would have become a lot less unbearable. I think we all would have became Barcelona fans. Dad, what what do you think about that? That he almost played there. Uh, it's it's I, it's unbelievable. I didn't know that, but um, the thing that I you know it's for me hard to believe that someone with that talent uh you know why don't more teams are looking for him you know i i wish that he would go to uh you know i want to see him come back to play uh and i think that once uh, he comes back to play he's going to still show some great things i wish ac milan there was a lot to show well, yo, oh, by the way, Antonio, he was he's an ac milan fan he grew up in ac That's milan true. Yeah. you can tell you know <laughs> <laughs> Intelligent people, they only pick up the nothing but the, the, the best team. Come on. <laughs> How, could you see Giuseppe Rossi being an Inter Milan fan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so, yeah, definitely go check, go check out the way that he heal, handles that. And once, once we get MLS back, we'll actually be able to start seeing yes. Giuseppe play, which is another league which I don't think they've, they've told – um, they don't know when they're really going to come back. Well, I just uh, uh, Giovanni Savarese called me uh, an hour ago just to say hello. And uh, they are starting to practice now. Oh, okay. They're going to go. They're thinking that the beginning of June, around the 5th to the 8th of June, they're going to go to Orlando okay. to practice as a team. 
and then uh, we're looking at the end of June to start playing with the MLS. Okay. Oh, Giovanni, we miss him. Oh, we miss him, Gatano. I remember yeah. we used to go watch him, watch uh, the watch the game all the time. I mean, Giovanni is, is a great guy inside the field and outside the field. Number, I think he's one of the top coach of all the uh, United States, if it's not the number one in the United States. I, Antonio, I agree with you 100%. Listen, listen to me. The guy as a player is got the, still is, is the older of the MLS, uh, uh, the, the Metro Star. He's got the, still the, 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 the most goal inside of the Metro Stars, right? Number one. Number two, he has shown that he, he can take any team and he can just bring the team at least to play the final or to win. He has won just about everything with the, with the Cosmos in multiple, in, in sequence, year after year after year after year. So uh, now I think he's going to try to do it uh, with uh, the Timberwolves. Uh, what, what's the name of the, the, the team again? Well, the Timbers. Yeah, the Timbers. Yeah, right. Guys, I think, uh, I think this whole coronavirus is getting to us. We, we all agreed too much on this podcast. I think we were too nice to each other. I think we miss each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I don't think we have any other topics unless anybody else has anything else to say. Is there anything on on anybody's mind? Oh, you said something about the Gazetta controversial. Oh. Oh yeah, you're right. So Gazetta uh released Oh yeah, I have to say this for Antonio. I forgot. Um they released their flop 11. Uh, compiled of players who went from, uh, in their words, these players had either a high transfer value, a big name around them, or a lot of anticipation, and they didn't live up to the height. Uh, so I'll start, I'll start with the front three uh, for, for a very specific reason. They put Lozano, Alexis Sanchez, and Verdi up top. In the midfield, they put Pastore, Rabiot, and Paqueta. In the back, they put Bareca, Vavro, Godin, and Spinazzola. And then the goalkeeper has uh, Alex Meret. Wow. Oh, brother. It wasn't Meret Gaetano, the best goalkeeper uh, in the history of the game. <laughs> history of the game. Say, no, no. I never said in the history of the game. I said better than Donnarumma. Oh, yeah. You just wish. My friend Phil in Philadelphia, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be listening to this podcast. I said, hey, Phil, <laughs> one of these days we're going to come to Philly. We're going to... We're going to see if uh, there is any butter left because Butterfinger over there is at the bottom of the list. <laughs> no, it's not fair to have Meret there, though. Come on. Yeah, it was a little unfair. I don't think you, you guys think so. There. No, Meret does, uh, doesn't belong there. <laughs> yeah. Pete? But I got news for you. I got news for you. I will make the swap Donnarumma to Meret for AC Milan. Not for, just for the reasons that I don't want Donnarumma to go to Inter, Juventus, Barcelona, or Real Madrid. I would rather to take Meret teach him how to play goalkeeper, just <laughs> wash the butter off his finger and just put some, uh, something else. And then Meret on AC Milan, because we have very good trainers on AC Milan, will become one of the top uh, three or four goalkeepers. Peter, you obviously do not agree that Meret is there, right? So, I might uh, differ. <laughs> oh, <laughs> reason, uh, I like I'll, it. The reason why is because what you said, you know, those three categories that you said before, so Meret was expected to be the top goalkeeper. He not necessarily under he, he underperformed. Let's say that he underperformed. There's there's games where he makes boneheaded mistakes, and he lost his spot in Napoli. So he's a flop for this year. Well, he was injured he, too, he, though. P P he was injured. And then Ospina took over. And then when he came back, Ospina was just but, playing good, and he didn't overtake him. Name name another goalkeeper in Serie A that was expected to be great and hasn't really performed. It's that's why I, off the top of my head. Well, Scoufette hasn't been for, for Yeah, I know, year. I know. So that's why I said for this category and for what those requirements were, okay. he would probably be my, my goalkeeper. Also. Anybody else say – well, sorry, yeah. I think we all agree. Uh, I think that uh, Antonio would agree now. That Carlo Ancelotti knows about soccer, right, Antonio? Yeah, some. Yeah. Maybe some. <laughs> yeah, no, of course he knows. The guy is one of the most successful coaches. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And he believed he believed in merit. Okay, he played merit. Then uh, things, uh, you know, then things changed, and a um, uh, different coach came in, and now he made a mistake. He made a couple of mistakes, and that's it. The guy, the guy is not finished. No. No, without a doubt, I don't think he's finished. I think he, he could have a, a very strong comeback here if that's the case because he has everything. 
to be a good goalkeeper. And it, Anybody and else? Very, he's very young. Yeah. yeah, he's young. Anybody else on that list that you don't agree with? Uh, I think you said Godin. I'm not sure yeah. about Godin. Who else did you say in the back? Spinazzola. I, Spinazzola, I felt like he doesn't deserve to be there. I thought I think he's pretty good overall. Uh, and no way he's a flop. Spinazzola went from being one of the best fullbacks last year. He, for he's Juventus a starter. To, he's a starter for Roma. He's definitely not a flop for the, me. The front, the front three was Lozano, Sanchez, and Verdi. Verdi, definitely. Verdi, when he was in Bologna, I'm telling you, the guy was... Uh, was a superstar. He was all over the place. Then you guys agree with Sanchez? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Sanchez. Sanchez is at the end of his career anyway. Nobody cares about him anyway. Who cares about Sanchez? Would well, you agree with Paqueta? Oh, Paqueta, Paqueta. I don't know. He's been a big disappointment for me, to be honest okay. with you. Because, uh, you know, the guy, the guy, he had the tendency of holding the ball too much. This is not a... This is not a place where you can juggle the, around with the ball. This is a team. Once you are inside a team, you have to play for the team. You can do a couple, couple uh, you know, uh, you can showcase some of, sometime your skills. But holding the ball too much, that was his major mistake. I don't think this mm -hmm. Paqueta has got a lot of potential, but he has to learn how to play in Serie A. This is not Brazil or it's not, uh, you know, Greece or uh, some other, uh, you know, country where, uh, you know, you make mistakes and... Uh, and nobody's gonna let you let you know that uh, what you're doing. But uh, in the Serie A, man, it's either you put numbers over there or you out. And so I think he deserves it. To me, AC Milan will do will do the best thing to just to let him go. Maybe he'll do much better in another team. I mean, uh, I'm very disappointed. A lot of money spent, okay. and he didn't show show up uh, on on the field. He didn't. He was given plenty of opportunities. Now he's on the bench. Okay. Okay. And it's gonna become a Very trading good. chip for us. And hopefully somebody's gonna take the hey, Yeah, my friend Joe Barone is looking for him. I said, Joe, maybe he's gonna do very well for uh, with you. Maybe Comiso is gonna talk some sense to the kid because uh, apparently he's not listening to the to the AC Milan uh, uh, you know uh, management. So I think Joe can talk some sense to him. And I know Joe he knows how to talk sense to players. <laughs> yeah, maybe he needs a little bisteca and uh, he'll, he'll get a little stronger and a little smarter. Bisteca Fiorentina, you're right, Marco. I, I agree Lampro with you. Lampredotto is better. Anyway, um, guys, uh, I appreciate everybody uh, coming on. Obviously, I think everybody's going to be real happy to have a podcast every freaking day. Oh, when's a podcast? When's yeah. a podcast? When's a podcast? When's a podcast? Finally bringing so one So we now. finally had time to record one. Obviously, content is a little bit weird right now. Um, but we're going to be trying to do as much as we can. And I think if you guys end up watching Bundesliga, we could try to give our opinion a little bit on it, even though Antonio's not <laughs> yeah, a big fan. Uh, I mean, we can have uh, more podcasts. I mean, I see these guys on TV every day. They got nothing to talk about, but, you know, they, they just uh, have this podcast and people uh, listen. Maybe they like to listen to us. You know, we can, we can have uh, more podcasts. Yeah. You got to bust out the guitar one night. Maybe maybe people want to hear you sing. No, but listen. <laughs> hey, listen. Then listen. forget about it. Then nobody's going to gonna watch it anymore. <laughs> hey, maybe we have to put a jacket and tie. Yeah? You have to fix my teleprompter over here because I cannot see that better. I put some extra light on the teleprompter oh, so we can read a little better what we have to say. Bottom line is this is the best podcast that we have in the United States. Am I right or wrong, Peter? Just in the United yeah. States. You're right. You're right. Yeah. The whole world. Best. Actually, best in the world, actually. Yeah. Right or wrong? Turn off your freaking phone on. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my phone. Oh, that who's was is not it? my phone. That's Peter's yeah, phone. Uh, <laughs> I'm on mute. <laughs> Someone's lying. The <laughs> <laughs> um, same old stuff. Some things never change, even if we're, uh, even if we're on a Zoom call. Okay, guys. guys. As, what happened? You got to say uh, something? Uh, Peter, Peter you, look, you look like you lost weight, man. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it's the black shirt. <laughs> I'm going to call your mother and I to, to tell her to cook uh, something nice and, uh, you know. Light. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now that we are in this uh, coronavirus environment, you know, if we have nothing to talk about, uh, we can talk about uh, food. You know, a lot of people are cooking, making... Uh, Oh, and they're becoming very popular with hey, the don't, make me, don't, don't start me with cooking because I'm the best. Yeah. Me. I, I'm, well, the <laughs> best I'm the best at giving orders, okay?
Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah, Hopefully, like we'll that. do a podcast <laughs> soon. Maybe next week. We'll get a uh, get a few more questions. Maybe we'll talk about food a little bit. Guys, Donna can play a little guitar. I'm down to do that. If we yeah. do a podcast with you playing the guitar We're and something about something food. about food, yeah, I'm, I'm down, down for to do that. that. I won't miss it. We can do a set. We can do a segment making pizza with Antonio. Perfect. I Ant- only knows fish. Pulpo. <laughs> <laughs> Sepia. <laughs> we can do that. We can arrange for that. That's, 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 that's okay. Good. good. All right, okay, guys. guys. We'll As see always, you next time. Thank you for watching. Rate us with five stars, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, guys. Ciao. Ciao, guys. Ciao.